This year in the AFC South, the Jacksonville Jaguars have been the team to beat. And if we can defeat them on their home turf today, we'll only be one game back of first place. Welcome back, everybody, to the Tennessee Titans franchise on Madden 23. We take on the top-ranked Jaguars this week, but we're going to come into this game missing a very key player as Christian Fulton was hurt in practice. A broken finger will have him missing not only this game, but next week as well. And we have signed veteran corner Trey Flowers as a replacement. And now our cornerback room looks really thin. To make room on the roster, we have dealt Fedarian Mathis to the Chicago Bears for a sixth round pick. Missing one of our defense's best players, a little more pressure is put on to some of these young guys like Connor Knox. We're close to learning his development, and he's continuing to develop his cover skills. They'll be needed today against Trevor Lawrence and a very high-powered Jaguar offense. The Jaguars are fifth in the NFL in scoring this year, and they'll be going after a secondary missing Christian Fulton. And the battle I'm looking forward to watching today will feature Trayvon Randolph and the rookie corner James Beverly, who already has three interceptions and superstar development. Can't believe he was a second rounder. But it's time to get this one underway, the last game before trade deadline decisions are made. Welcome to Jacksonville in week seven. Jaguars are up first here in Duval. Across the 20, nice run back to the 26 yard line. As we will see, Trevor Lawrence face this defense right out the gate today. Travis Etienne joins him in the backfield on first down. He's actually only second on uh, the team in carries this year and breaks off a nice one to start the game, breaking a tackle, and it's a gain of 10. Defense adjusting late on second down. Etienne slips past one, stiff arms Diablo, and gets hammered down around the first down marker. Third and short for Jacksonville. Lawrence back to pass. Has ETN, but he's shy of the marker. Covered by Pete Werner. Fourth and inches, and a punt coming up for Jacksonville. This has been one of the hottest offenses in the NFL for the last two weeks. Derrick Henry has ran for 185 and 194 in each of those games as the offense has thrived. He opens on the ground, carrying up the middle for a gain of one. His newest challenge is the number eight run defense in the NFL so far. On second down, Henry stuffed again. It's only a short gain setting up third down. Brian Nava, the rookie, on third and seven, under pressure and sacked. It's Trayvon Walker, the former number one pick. Back this week for Tennessee is Trevor Penning as the offensive line is back to full strength. But his pass protection issues this year have been well documented down in the comments. Here's Trevor Lawrence, a short field to begin the drive as he finds Evan Ingram on the outside for a first down. Quickly into field goal range on this drive, staying empty. Ingram on the catch, covered by Diablo. Ingram's another really good challenge for this defense as the handoff goes to Christian Kirk. And he'll work his way outside for about five as Brandon Scherf is a bit shaken up for Jacksonville. A four-man rush, and it gets to Lawrence on second down. He is sacked by Jeffrey Simmons. He just put an incredible spin move on Brandon Scherf's replacement. It's third and 14, eight in coverage for Tennessee. Lawrence throwing and nearly intercepted by Trey Flowers. Could have been a really nice first impression there. But the Jaguars go up 3-0 here in the first, and Nava's pass is knocked away. It's been fun to watch this offense fly up and down the field the last couple weeks, but things look challenging here to start. Henry is stuffed again, and it's third down. Four on the rush for Jacksonville. Pressure gets there, and the pass is picked off by Devin Lloyd. It's the fifth interception this year for Brian Nava. And the Jaguars get a short field for Lawrence and the offense. Another late shift. Here's ETN. Breaks the tackle into the secondary. A gain of 12. Tennessee lines up with no deep safety on second down. Lawrence to his left. Completes. Here's Kirk. Inside the five. Gets hammered by Knox. 
and it's goal to go Jaguars. On first down, Lawrence scans, rolls right, finds his man for the touchdown, it's Richie James. And he is the touchdown leader in this offense. That is his fifth receiving touchdown on the year as the Jaguars go up 10 to nothing here early. What a terrific start for Jacksonville. Already got a turnover, two scoring drives under their belt. Tennessee just trying to get their first first down today. Nava's under pressure, nowhere to go, he throws it away. 0 of 3 to begin the day for Brian Nava. Makes an adjustment at the line, third and seven. Looks downfield, overthrowing Bynes. A three and out and right back to Jaguars offense we go. Out of the shotgun, here's Lawrence on first down. That's caught. And it's good for a first, Richie James. Three tight ends in the game now for Jacksonville. And it's a counter. Here's ETN, wrapped up on the play by Aleem McNeil. Time winding down in this first quarter. Second down, pressure's on and down goes Lawrence. Back-to-back -back play is made by Aleem McNeil. Good job by the defense getting the ball back. But the offense hasn't gone anywhere. Nava slings it on the move for his first completion to Dominic Brooks. It's a gain of two. Now one of five in the air. They try Henry with a quick cut to the right. He gets a little more space. And now Sal Sexton is shaken up on the play. He leaves the field replaced by Dominic Brooks on third down. Here's pressure. Nava throws outside. He has Phillips well shy of the marker, and he's going to lose yardage. Tennessee's offense struggling out of the gate. They haven't done anything right. Thankfully, it looks like it's just cramping for Sal Sexton. He'll be back for the next drive as the Jaguars try to build upon their lead. A deep ball. It's tipped and incomplete. Ronnie Harrison on the coverage. Second and ten. Quick pressure from Riddick, and that pass is out of bounds. This front four is starting to turn up the pressure on Trevor Lawrence. Third and ten. Spins out of danger and throws it away. Three straight incompletions forced. As they slow down the Jaguar offense, can they find something to work offensively? First and ten. Caught by Randolph, and Beverly's all over him. The rookies have been matched up. And here is very tight man-to-man -man coverage across the board. They are all over these receivers. It was a gain of five, and now Randolph in motion. Gets the handoff, but he runs directly into Josh Allen and loses three yards. And it sets up third down. Polite in the game. Nava scanning. Has time. Downfield. That's caught by Randolph. Got the better of Beverly at the sideline. Again, this is really tight coverage, but it gets the first down. Now pressure on the way. Nava gets the pass off. Back of the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. No way. Did he seriously come down in bounds? It's Trayvon Randolph for the touchdown. If this stands, just give him a chance. He doesn't need much space, but does he really get his feet down? When does he establish control? It's not really until here. And look where the feet are. They are both on the turf. Now they're going to review this. Every scoring play is reviewed. Did you know that? You're always reminded. I think that's a catch for Trayvon Randolph. This guy is unreal. And the touchdown stands. Tennessee is on the board thanks to some incredible play out of Trayvon Randolph. He was that entire drive. Tennessee has scored and we have ourselves a game. Following a holding call, pass hauled in by Jamie Burnham. And the Jaguars get to a third and 11. Lawrence has time and now evading pressure as he fires out of bounds. Incomplete. It is another three and out. So we know now this offense can move when Trayvon Randolph does something ridiculous. What else do you got? You need a little more than that. The running game doesn't appear to be there today. 
A fake for Nava rolling left, and he drops it off. Here is Dominic Brooks rumbling his way into Jaguar territory. Two tight ends in the game for Tennessee as the fake goes to Henry. Rolling to the right, Nava heaves it. Caught by Brooks inside the five. 40 yards to the tight end. And Tennessee has it goal to go. Hey, we've seen this once before. They come out in the Wildcat. Polite in motion. Henry on the keeper. Drives through one. Powers his way in for the touchdown. Hey, if you're struggling to run the football, get the quarterback off the field and get the numbers back into your favor in the blocking department. 14-10. Tennessee has flipped the game on its head here in the first half. Lawrence pressured. He sacked again. Aleem McNeil. What a difference he's made this year. I think he is a very critical part of this defense. Lawrence knocked down. That was Connor Knox covering Travis Etienne. Another three and out. Tennessee trying to make it three scoring drives in a row. Henry off tackle. Sprints outside and falls ahead for a gain of eight. They really want to get him going like they have the last two weeks. That's a fake with Lloyd coming through, and he picks up a sack. Nine-yard loss. Where do you go on second and 19? Nava against the blitz goes Randolph's way, and he's brought down near midfield. Third and nine for Tennessee. Binds alone to the left. Nava back to pass. He checks it down to Rashad Polite, and he is going nowhere. And the Tennessee momentum is halted with under two minutes to go in the first half. Jaguars at their own 14 here with a minute to go. Lawrence throwing and connecting with Richie James on the outside. Good for 11. They have one timeout in their back pockets. For rush, Lawrence has time. Tipped away by Roger McCreary. Titans looking for one more stop to cap off the first half. Lawrence outside. It's Ingram spun down by McCreary as he gains eight. They go no huddle. Save the timeout. It's third and two. Lawrence has Ingram first down across midfield. And the Jaguars will spend that final timeout. Maybe one play away from a field goal try. Still have to get a first down. And Lawrence has Ingram again. Out of bounds at the 31. And they're going to bring out the field goal team right there. The kick is good. And it's a one-point game that will take us into halftime. But the Titans do lead. And that was an impressive second quarter turnaround with how bad that first quarter was. They didn't complete their first pass until the second quarter and still managed to take the lead. More action in the AFC South as the Texans take on the Miami Dolphins. And right now the Texans have the advantage 17-14 in the second quarter. And how about the only unbeaten team left in football? It's the Atlanta Falcons and they are down 38-14 at the half to Tampa. What has happened to their defense this week? You never know what's going to happen in these games. And Tennessee is trying to pull off an upset of their own against the Jaguars. Up by one. Henry stuffed again. Just has not found that run to really get the offense going. Third down here for Nava. Flag down. He finds Devy and Bynes, but he can't get to the first down marker. And this is going to be against Tennessee. So if you're Jacksonville, do you accept or decline that? Well, they decline, and Tennessee brings out the punt team, and it is not a fake. They do not go for it from their own 40. Nice punt, though, by Rich Matthews. He downs Jacksonville at the 6. The defense has seemingly gotten comfortable in this game as the Jaguars will start the second half with a completion to Christian Kirk. ETN the back on third and one. Pinching the line. ETN right up the middle for a first down. And that looks like it could be a whole lot more. But it's a gain of 13. Lawrence heads to the air on second down. Complete to Kirk. And he makes his way to the sideline for a first down. 
8.14 to play in the third. ETN carries to the right side. He breaks into the secondary. Runs through a tackle, and he's down inside the 25. Sloppy run defense this week out of Tennessee. This has been perhaps their worst showing this year. 23 yards away. Lawrence off the fake. To the end zone! Caught by Kirk for the touchdown! A perfectly executed play-action boot. But how about all the separation created by Kirk in the slot? I don't feel like Roger McCreary is earning a second contract with us. They will go for two, trying to go up seven, and ETN gets stuffed. It is a five-point Jaguars advantage. And Tennessee will trail again. Here is Henry on the carry, trying the left side as they run behind Trevor Penning. Following a gain of six, it's second down. That's a strikeout to Devian Bynes across midfield. Tennessee driving. Two tight ends in the game on first down. It's a fake for Nava. Looks downfield. He wants Randolph once again. Knocked away this time. Tyson Campbell on the coverage. Six minutes left to go, and Henry muscling forward. That's a decent effort as he gains five. Could be looking at four down territory here. Third down, caught by Bynes. Nice adjustment, first down to the 33. Nava in a pretty good rhythm, 14 of 19. A fake again on first down. Gets the pass away, overthrowing Devi and Bynes. He had a chance on that play. We'll see how they handle third and seven. It's a four-man rush. Caught by Randolph. He's wrapped up short of the marker. And on fourth and three, what is your call? Looks like the offense is staying out there. Everybody in tight. They need three yards. Nava, complete to Randolph. He is the go-to guy whenever the going gets tough. And it's worked more often than not. Three and change to go in the third quarter as Polite gets the handoff and gets hammered down by Zach Allen. Here is a third and 12 now for Tennessee. Everybody in tight. Facing a four-man rush. Nava up top. It's caught by Polite for the touchdown. What? A throw, and Tennessee is back in front. Check out the safety here to Sean Payton. He comes crashing down to cover Polite. He just flies right by him. Not a safety in the league that's going to cover that speed. 20 to 19, they go for two, and the throw is wide of Bynes, incomplete. Definitely a missed opportunity there. So we have ourselves another lead change. Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars down here with 2.30 left to go in the third. And they're all over ETN in the backfield. The combo of Gary and Aleem McNeil. Jaguars facing third down. Lawrence on target. And it's Richie James. He's playing a pretty key role in this offense, doing a phenomenal job. ETN gets it. Could be final play of the quarter. And it's a gain of three. Third and two for Jacksonville. This box is stacked. ETN runs into a wall. He doesn't get there. It was Connor Knox on the hit. But the offense will stay in for Jacksonville. Fourth and a good half yard to go. And they give it to the fullback. Seaton Carter first down. Just across midfield now as Lawrence goes empty on second down. He's spinning around and finds ETN. That'll go for about nine. Lawrence over 200 yards passing with that completion. Two receivers to the right. It's third and one. That is cut by Ingram. Good for a first. Still haven't found a way to slow down the tight end effectively. From the 35, ETN inside, has the first down, takes it inside the 20, and becomes the first running back to go over 100 yards on the defense this season. Under 10 minutes to play, and here's ETN. This time, he's bottled up. They go empty in response here on second down. Lawrence feels pressure, dishes to ETN. 
Brought down by Werner, a little bit shy of the marker. Third and short now for Jacksonville. Griffin checks in. Lawrence under pressure, gets away from it, and finds his man. It's caught by Ingram, and he just got stopped shy of the end zone. Maybe a half yard out on first and goal. Lawrence will throw, and James scores again. Number six for Richie James Jr. Jacksonville pulls ahead. They will go for two after failing on their previous try. And Lawrence has ETN for the two. 27-20, Jaguars lead. That was a 15-play scoring drive, and the Tennessee offense must answer again. Nava outside, caught by Phillips. And they open with a 21-yard strike. Still a lot of time to go in this football game. First and 10 for Nava. Hits Randolph on the easy one, and they are in the Jaguar territory again. Third and five. Polite's in the game. Four-man rush. Gets it away. Barely caught by Phillips again. Big time throw out of Brian Nava with a defender on his back. 6.30 left to go. Polite's turn. He gets dumped. Nice play in the backfield. Crowd getting behind their defense as they drop out of a blitz. Nava steps up, has Randolph. And if he wanted Phillips, he was open again along the sideline. Didn't see him. Third and three. Henry gets the handoff, tries to cut it right, and he stops short. Fourth and one. Offense stays in. Run or pass. It's Henry. And he just gets enough. The drive continues with the Titans trying to tie things up. It's a handoff for Henry. Weaves his way outside and grinds down to the five. And they're running clock here in the process. Down to 339. A fake with Nava rolling right. He fires. Caught. Touchdown. Trayvon Randolph. Second of the day. He's just trying to have some fun in the crowd. They won't allow it. And Tennessee will tie this game up at 27. What a week. Another fantastic game with this Titans team. 3.30 left to go. Lawrence completes to Kirk. And he makes a nice move on Werner getting first down yardage. They are coming off a 15-play scoring drive. Looking to at least get three here. Big hole ETN across midfield. Not far from field goal range now. 2.18 on the clock. Here's Lawrence on first down. He throws out to his left, and there's nobody near Kirk. And he easily gets into field goal range. Tennessee's got to think about how to manage this clock and get the ball back now. Lawrence is going to keep it. And is spun around by Divine Diablo. This brings up a third down. Tennessee holding on to a pair of timeouts. ETN the carry. He doesn't go far. And Tennessee will use their second as the Jaguars bring out the field goal team. For a three-point lead, the kick is good. Jaguars ahead 30-27. to 27. Can Brian Nava... Answer once again. That was a terrific drive last time out. He's had some great moments today. Starts on first down. Faces pressure and is sacked by Trayvon Walker. He has been dominating Trevor Penning. It's second down and 17. Pressured again. Overthrowing Henry. And it was Walker on the pressure. 109 to go in the game, but a third and 17. Nava dumps quick, has polite. He'll try to avoid Muma, and he is stopped at the 26. It's fourth and nine. They got to have it here. Nava making changes at the line. Here's the pressure, and he sacked again. The game is over, and the Jaguars will hold on. Timmy Church gives up the rush. To Zach Allen. And the Titans who fought so hard in this game will be ending up short. 
and falling to three and four on the season. The Jaguars' hold of this division grows stronger and they avoid losing back-to-back -back games inside the division. The old line really could not hold up for that one last drive. Trayvon Walker was a problem and Trevor Penning's pass protection issues will once again be a topic of conversation. We did not run the football well today with our offensive line at full strength. We ran the ball better with replacement offensive linemen. Interesting. Our defense didn't play a great game. We struggled against the run. In the second quarter, we really had their offense in a bind, but they were pretty pass heavy in that quarter. And once they ran the ball more, there really wasn't a way to slow down the offense as easily any longer. Um, Sal Sexton didn't have a catch in this game, so that was definitely an issue. The defense was challenging. They have a lot of good talent there. You see why they're highly ranked. If we check out the rest of the NFL, look who had an amazing game this week. It's Malik Willis. Four total touchdowns as the Raiders have one of the biggest wins of the week, scoring the most points, 52, beating the Steelers. Not only does Willis have a great game, but they intercepted Joshua Holcomb five times with five different defensive players, I might add. So despite losing to us, the Raiders still look to be in very, very good shape. And a surprise that I saw was Denver topping Kansas City 52 to 38. That is a whole lot of points. They intercepted Patrick Mahomes three times and Russell Wilson had himself a nice day along with Javante Williams. And among the interceptors of Patrick Mahomes in this game is former Titan Chance Campbell. Checking out the league leaders, we still see that Desmond Ritter leads the league in passing yards and passing touchdowns with 22. Russell Wilson, nine interceptions, leads the league. Derrick Henry still holds the NFL rushing title at this point of the season. And Chris Godwin continues an amazing start to the year. Despite the Buccaneers' lack of team success, they began 0-4, have won their last three, and Godwin's a big reason why. Oh yeah, the Ravens are still undefeated, so the Falcons now at 6-1, they're no longer unbeaten, only one unbeaten team stands. Caught my attention that the Lions were down towards the bottom of the standings, and they've missed Miles Jeffrey for, I think, the entire year, basically, and they're playing Drew Locke instead, so their season appears to be pretty much sunk. But now that we are seven games into the year, we are 3-4 and four behind the 6-1 and one Jaguars. We have to talk about the trade deadline and where we think this team is. And if we have to think about making some trades, we already lack a first-round pick next year. But we have a team that does look good enough to compete at times. But I don't view us as a Super Bowl contender this year. I think next year is possible with just the age of the roster and these young players getting some more experience. We could still be a far better team by the end of the year, but what's our record going to be and what's that playoff field look like? Do we consider moving on from Derrick Henry? Maybe one of the most valuable players we could look to trade. We don't have a ton of expiring free agents at the end of the year that we need to get rid of. But I think that you could maybe look to trade away some guys. I know Trevor Penning has not played up to the expectations. And it's hard to see us, you know, extending him long term. But in week 8, after we make our trade deadline decisions, we will meet a 3-4 and four San Francisco team. And I expect us to do well. But we're going to miss Christian Fulton again. I don't think I've ever seen a practice injury last two weeks, but that's a pretty big one. We'll face Teddy Bridgewater and this offense a week from now, which means we'll see Debo Samuel and George Kittle. Both are a little bit older, but they have added some talent to the offense. And I think that it's still going to be a, a fairly tough game, although I don't think this San Francisco team's as good as the start of the franchise. If we look at just the strength of the AFC... There are six teams that are at least five and two and 10 teams that are over 500 right now. And we're at three and four. I feel like the rest of the year needs to be optimized for making sure we're in the best position to compete next year. 
I've looked at all the team records and I wanted to see how strong our upcoming schedule appears. So here are those teams current records. Five of our next seven opponents are at 500 or lower. I think there's a chance for us to get into the wild card. But the big question right now is if we want to focus a bit more on the future, what players do we look to trade away? And that is going to be how we end today's video. A great game, but definitely a damaging loss. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Leave your thoughts down below. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel. Much more Titans franchise coming your way soon. Have a great day.